Hi, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate dry needling to the lumbar region. This is a great modality to use for clients that might be experiencing generalized lower back pain. And as with any rounded treatment, we wouldn't just focus on dry needling to the lower back area, we would accompany this with wider treatment, um, probably to the gluteal region, to the hamstrings, and to the opposing muscle groups as well. So you can mix this with manual massage techniques or other modalities as well within that wider treatment. Okay, so the needles that I'm going to use um, in this video are the Classic Plus needles. The size of the needle is a 25 millimeters in length um, times 0.22 in diameter. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're focusing on dry needling to the erector spinae group. So a good technique for trying to identify the muscle, especially in clients where it might not be that visible, is to take the thumb onto the spinous process, and then you're roughly going to measure out about one to one and a half thumb widths away from the spinous process. Now the needle is then going to angle back towards the spine, angling towards that transverse process, which is where the muscle attaches. Okay, so before we start needling, we need to sterilize the area and sterilize the hands. Now in some areas, it's um, preferred that we use gloves, but if you are focusing on doing combination treatment where you might be doing manual massage at the same time on another area of the body, then sometimes using gloves can be a little bit awkward. Okay, so I've sterilized my hands and sterilize the treatment area. And then we're just going to lower the towel down so that we can see that wider treatment area nice and clearly. Okay, then we're here. We're going to, as I mentioned, using those 25 millimeter needles in length. Now the length of this needle is often dictated by the size of the client and the size of the musculature. So if you've got a smaller client with um, less muscle mass, then we might want to use a slightly smaller needle versus a larger client with more muscle mass and more bulk as well. You might then want to use a slightly longer needle. But the key aim of the needle is that we are penetrating into the muscle tissue. Okay, so from here, focusing on that lumbar region and palpating for areas of tension. So the key focus with dry needling is that we're palpating for trigger points or muscular tension, and that's going to help you to identify where the needle goes in. So I've just prepared the needle, taken the stopper off there. Okay, then I'm palpating for the spinous process and coming about one to one and a half thumb widths away from the spinous process. Then I'm angling the needle back towards the spine. So the needle is roughly about a 20 um, to a 25 degree angle. Normally, once you take that guided tube off, the needle will lift up slightly. So then I'm going to lower that needle down and again, pressing that needle in roughly about halfway. So the needle has now gone through the skin, through that connective fascia and into the muscle tissue. We need to think about the client as well when we're um, pressing the needle into the tissue that um, sometimes there's a tendency to do a big tap um, or a whack of the needle. We don't need to be too aggressive with tapping the needle into the tissue. Okay, so as I'm coming back for my second needle here, again, I'm coming back to the spinous process to measure, and then go about one to one and a half thumb widths away. I can feel that I'm on that um, muscle group. I'm feeling for tension and abnormality here. And then I'm angling my needle, pressing in towards the spine. Okay, so the needles are coming back in and they're angling towards that transverse process. And then I'm just going to do one more here. Okay, just to demonstrate that again, feeling for trigger points, feeling for tension in the tissue, coming back to the spinous process, one to one and a half thumb whips away. And when you're putting multiple needles in, you're making sure that your, your hand position isn't pressing on any of those earlier needles. So you do want to move that hand around so that you're not accidentally pressing on the needles that are already in there. 
Okay, so we always put our needles in first, okay, before we then go into activation of the needle. That gives the client chance to get used to that needle sensation and gives the body enough time to relax and get used to the sensation as well. Okay, how are those needles feeling, Nadia? Fine, I can feel them more at the top. Okay. Okay, good. If those needles were create a sensation that was too strong for the client, we then want to make sure that they're relaxing into it and that it was a strength where they can cope with it and breathe deeply. We wouldn't then reactivate that needle because it's already activated. If the client can't really feel any sensation, that's when we're going to activate the needle. Okay, so the first activation method is quite light and we're literally flicking the needle. As we flick the needle, that's gonna send a vibration down the needle and in towards the tissue. Okay, so we flicked those. We then ask the client again for any change in that sensation. If any of these have now created quite a strong sensation, we wouldn't then go to reactivate it. Okay, then the next activation method we're going to do is turning that needle. So we're just turning the needle one um, or half to one um, once round. Okay, in that circular direction. And then finally, we can then pepper the needle. Okay, and we're looking to see whether any twitch responses are created, okay, or whether that sensation has changed. And quite often we might see a visual presence of erythema, okay, which is a reddening of a tissue around the needle. And that's quite nice because then that shows that we have increased localized blood flow. Okay, so this is a short demonstration of dry needling to the erector spinae group in the lower back region. And this is a useful technique for helping in the treatment of generalized lower back pain. Great for when the muscle is in that tension or that spasm type um, situation. So the muscle tissue might be hypertonic or whether there's some strong trigger points in the muscle tissue as well. But it's also great for if your client is experiencing quite high levels of pain because the dry needling can also so along with treating musculoskeletal disorders, it can also help to reduce pain sensation.